Hello everyone and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. Uh, my name is Inga and you can find me on Ravelry as Knitting Tradition or on Instagram as Knitting Traditions. That's where I post um, most of my projects, more so on Instagram than Ravelry, but I'm going to try and do better now that I'm podcasting. To those of you who saw the first episode, welcome back! You made me so happy just by watching it. And to those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. This is a knitting podcast and I'm coming to you from a tiny village on the west coast of Norway where I live with my dog. I just started working as a doctor here and outside of work I spend most of my time knitting. And I started this podcast to give back to the community and to keep track of all the things I'm making. So, um, what am I wearing? I am wearing a test knit that I did for Jennifer Steingas. I believe it's called the Arata sweater, but I'm going to check because I put that in the Ravelry notes. And I did this test knit when I still studied living in Poland. Um, she's also called Knit Love Wool. And yes, it's the Arata sweater. And uh, I, you can find the link to the pattern on Ravelry on my account. Um, I knit the size C, which is the third smallest size, I guess, and I used a Malabrigo sock yarn for the main color. It's super lovely. It's got variegated greens, light and dark, some blues and lilac and purples in here. It is a superwash wool and it does pale somewhat and it did grow a little bit in the washer but it does not itch if people are sensitive to itching I'm not really but I bought this yarn because I love the color and I didn't know what to make with it and then I got to test knit this pattern and I just acquired another skein so that I would have enough and the dark brown color and the dark green is also a sock yarn from Malabrigo. And the white one is an alpaca yarn from Drops, which is more hairy, but I thought it gave like a nice effect to the yoke pattern. Um, the Drops alpaca color is just called beige. The Malabrigo uh, sock. Sorry about that. I'm uh, recording on my phone and somebody called me. My, um, my parents and one of my brothers are coming up here on Thursday to go fishing up on the mountains. There's like little ponds and they have trout and those kinds of fish. So we're going to go fishing there. Back to the podcast. Um, we're talking about the colors on the yoke and the Malabrigo colors, let's see, the main color is called Alacausal, Alacausal, mm, don't know how to pronounce that. It's 805 Alacausal. And then the, um, the green is called 863 Zarzamora. It's a lovely, lovely dark green. I'm going to show you later because I went stash diving and I'm using the um, scraps for another project because it only took like 40 grams for this yoke with the green. 
The dark brown color is called Chocolate Armago. I also have a lot of scraps left over from that. Um, I think I used 56 meters, 61 yards, so it's not really that much. So I have a lot left. And what else? It's a top-down circular yoke. Um, and I don't remember if the pattern included um, short rows in the back. I think it did. I at least have short rows in the back. Um, and I also put a tag in the back so that it's easier to know which side is the front and which side is the back. And it's knit down. You can have different sleeves. I chose a slight bell sleeve that goes in on the edge with a um, one knit one, purl one, and then a rolled over hem, which is created by just knitting a few rounds. And yeah, it's a lovely sweater. I think the yoke is really beautiful. It's not very warm though, so I haven't worn it that much just because when I want to grab a sweater, usually I want to I want the sweater to feel warm, so usually I do tend to grab either the thicker soft sweaters or the more rustic thin sweaters just to have that warming effect, especially uh, now that it's getting dark and gloomy outside. It's the end of September right now and it's rainy and foggy. Outside. Actually, I'm not really sure if it's foggy or if it's the clouds because where I live is on one of the coves or whatever you would call them of the fjord and it's surrounded by really tall mountains. So when the humidity comes in, it kind of just stays. So when I'm looking out the window right now on eye level, I see what looks like a cloud above. So it might just be a super thick fog above the ground or it's clouds either way it's really nice to be able to sit inside i had a shift yesterday so that when i finished work at the office at four i was on call until this morning when i went back to the office for another eight hours shift so i'm a little bit exhausted But it's all good. In a few hours, there's actually an event happening in this tiny little village. A knitting event in the library. All Corona safe, of course. There has actually not been a single person with COVID-19 here. So I'm really excited to go there and be safe and knit. And a few of the ladies from the office are also coming. So... That's gonna be really nice, be social and everything. Otherwise, um, works in progress. I have cast on another whip and I'm gonna show you the book. A lot of you has probably heard of Stephen West. Um, I wanted this book for a, I've wanted it for a really long time and I got it for Christmas last year from my brother and I've been knitting the um, Vertices Unite which is the pattern that I've been wanting to knit for forever since everyone else was knitting it and I figured now that people are kind of over that pattern and starting other ones I'm gonna knit it and I'm going to knit the large version in more subdued colors because that's my jam. And I've finished the first section, which is this stripey green and gold section right here. Um, so the dark green is actually this color, 
which I found in my stash. And I have this much left. And in the pattern there are six pieces. And this one is used for the stripes here, but it's also used for a solid section on the other end. And this was the Al Alcausal colorway. And the other color, color A, which is the glossy golden one here, I got when I went to the UK. It's this skein right here. And it's called um, Wishbone Gloss Sock. It's 70% fine merino and 30% tussa silk. And the color is honeycomb. And in the pattern, this color is going to be used for another stripey section, but I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do that or substitute it with a darker color because I saw that when I started um, section two that the light brown in this section is a little bit similar to this golden color. I guess on camera it looks better than in reality. In reality it's kind of difficult to see the difference and I do want more brown tones in the scarf which is why the third section is going to use this dark color which is the color um, Medler from Wishbone Solo which is 100% merino this section, before I forget, um, is using a speckled white color together with um, Wishbone Solo 100% Merino in the color Salted Caramel. The white color with speckles, this one, which is really lovely, is uh, a yarn from Grenouille. Gr Grenouille? Grenouille. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but I bought her advent calendar last year and I loved the colors. I started a uh, granny stripe blanket and then I realized I wanted to make a huge one with uh, pinks and purples and whites, like this one. But then for this pattern, I needed a lighter color and I didn't have any other ones in my stash. So I stole this one from my stash to put into this project. It's 100% um, merino, single ply, and it's called uh, Owl Feather, the color. I have a few skeins left, so I can still make a granny stripe blanket, or I could do every second white row with another white color. There's many options. And... Um, yeah, it uses those five colors. This one was the salted caramel, by the way, that is mixed with the owl feather. And um, except for the skein of Grenouille and the green one here, I, all acqu I acquired all of the skeins in London specifically for this project. And I also have a few other brown tones that I intended to use, but when I held them up together while planning the colors, they did look too similar but now I'm considering maybe using them for the stripes on the other side instead of um, the honeycomb one just to get a little bit more brown because there's gonna be a big brown section here but then besides that it's all gonna be more subdued and well the first section is dark but yeah and um, I have gotten a little bit further on the socks that I was knitting last time, but I forgot to bring them, so I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I'm keeping this uh, pair of socks inside the bag that I made before the last podcast with some scrap fabric that I bought at this cozy little boutique cafe in the middle of nowhere. And last time I had gotten this far in the first sock, 
this is just left for the Kitchener stitch, which I haven't done yet because I want to see that the socks have gotten as far on the toes that the pattern align because sometimes you know you knit a little bit more tightly and it might shift so I might have to adjust it so that's why I've kept it on the needles until the end it's a top-down sock very vanilla just some one knit one pearl one on the top with 64 stitches then I decrease to 60 stitches and knit stuck in it and then when I got to the point where I wanted the heel, I left these stitches on the needle and I knit these back and forth. Uh, and on the first needle, I increased one stitch on each side. So I had 32 stitches there. I knit down and then I did a short row or what's it called, gusset? It's a heel flap and gusset. So you do a gusset heel you just knit short rows basically back and forward and then you pick up the stitches on the side and I knit um, garter on the last two stitches on both sides so it's easy to pick up and then I decreased here every second row down to having 56 stitches on the needle and then I just knit in the round until I get to the um, almost last joint on the big toe when you try them on and then I did decreases on both sides every second round until the point where I want to finish off with the um, Kitchener stitch and the second sock I finished the leg and I finished the heel there and I've started doing the decreases on the side from the heel here and down, if you can see the decreases. Um, and to get the decreases to be nice, I do on the outside of the foot, or I guess the right side of the top of the foot, I knit two together and on the left side I slip slip knit to make it look nicer. So I think this will, will be finished before next time. It depends how much um, knitting I get done in between other things because I don't do knit these at home. It's when I'm traveling or waiting for things or on the go. And it's uh, knit in a yarn from Yestal Galm, which is a Norwegian producer. And it's called Stripey Strumpegan, which means sock yarn. And it's a 75% superwash wool and 25% nylon. And it doesn't really have a color. It's produced in Turkey, that's all it says. And I'm knitting it on 9 inch cir circular needles on 2.5 millimeters with a pretty tight gauge because I don't like my socks to be loose. And I got a lovely message from one of my subscribers who asked about um, why socks tend to get more loose after you wear them and wash them. And um, my experience is that if you knit with superwash wool, superwash wool has a tendency to stretch after you wash it. And also if you knit with alpaca, alpaca in my experience is one of the more drapey wools and not to be used if you want the fabric to stay the way it is when you're knitting it then it's better to use more rustic wools they don't tend to grow as much because they're more toothy and they stick to each other so the fibers are less slippery if that makes any sense and it's not as heavy as alpaca which has a very droopy quality to it. So those were my two whips. I'm really enjoying the Vertices Unite. Um, it's all garter, but you're always changing things up and you're playing with colors, which is really nice. And then last time, if you remember, I had a blanket on the needles, which I've had on the needles for over a year. 
Well, I finished it. It's done. This huge block of wool is done. And I calculated um, because this, it's not a pattern. It's just a huge blanket. And <laughs> it fits a king size bed. And I basically just cast on, on four millimeter needles, 377 stitches, not on purpose. I just lost count. I think I was aiming for 400, but I was too lazy to count. So 377. And basically the pattern is knit one, purl one, and repeat until the end. And then on the next round, you purl one, knit one. And to make it easy on myself, I um, this is made with an odd number of stitches, which means every round you start by knitting one and you end with knitting one. And that way, when you turn the needle and do the other way, that automatically changes the pattern so that you get knit over purl. And I did that for 700 rows. Oh, it's really warm. So that made a total of 263,000 stitches, 900. Hmm. It did feel like a million, but I guess around 270,000 stitches, where half of them are purl stitches, that's enough. And <laughs> the color is called Rosemary, and it's a super soft yarn from Holst, Holst Garn. They, um, they reside in Denmark, I think, but they ship worldwide, I believe. Don't hold me to that though, but I do know that there is um, uh, Leo and Roxy, is that a store? I think so. They also have a podcast. I think they are from Canada, but I'm never good with these details. But I know that they uh, bought cones of this super soft yarn from Holst, so if they got it, probably at least they shipped to Canada and the US. And I know they ship around Scandinavia. <sighs> I'm so happy to be done with that blanket. I think it's gonna get a lot of wear. It's super thin, like you can you can see through it, but still it gives warmth because it's 100% wool. It's not super scratchy, but it's not super soft. It has that toothy feeling and it's a little bit hard, but it's softened up nicely after the wash. So, um, what else? Stash enhancements? I didn't buy anything. I did really well. At the beginning of the year, I had a goal of not buying any more yarn, um, but I gave myself a tiny little rule that if I was traveling, I could buy yarn because when you go to a store far away there's no guarantee that you'll be able to come back so I use that clausel a lot to buy a lot of yarn but I don't think I'm gonna be traveling that much in any near future I'm pretty much stuck here because I'm on call almost every third or fourth day so that makes it a little bit difficult to leave so it's a good thing I have a huge stash because that allowed me to start Vertices Unite which has five different colors just using my stash and I still have a lot more yarn and in my Knit Dreams section I really want to cast on a sweater. I've been fantasizing about this turtleneck sweater in the thinner rustic wool uh, with a raglan and then once you get down to where your jeans start have like a split hem which is like long split hem with um, reverse stockinette so I think I'm gonna I don't know if I'm gonna make a pattern because I'm not good with sizing but um, I think I'm gonna try and make one for myself and I want to use this yarn which is holst super soft 
I um, have a cone in this color and I skeined up a few skeins of it and the idea is to combine um, one strand from the skeined up uh, ball together or cake together with one strand from the cone and knitted like a double stranded one because it's it's a very thin thin yarn but I think if you held it double you could probably knit it on well it's still super thin you could probably knit it on a 3.5 millimeter and it would be okay and it also grows a little bit when you wash it so I think I'm gonna try that but I have to see if I can get the thick turtleneck that I'm envisioning to stand up because if it gets all floppy I don't think it's gonna work for the kind of sweater that I have in mind. Otherwise, life, life is work and knitting <laughs> and watching Game of Thrones. I think I'm on season four now and um, I watched the movie Gentleman recently. Uh, it was supposed to be really good and I mean it wasn't bad but um, I did think with all those talented actors that it would be even better. But um, I guess people like different things. I guess maybe I need more like dragons and fantasy to be able to really enjoy something. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep watching Game of Thrones and knitting on my Vertices Unite and go to the knit night and I hope to see you all soon. I hope you're all doing well and if you like this podcast and you want to see more content please subscribe below, like the video, leave a comment. It might take you a few seconds of your day but it really means the world to me. It made me so happy when people reached out or subscribed and well, it just made me so happy and I want to make more content for you in the future. So I hope to see you all again. Bye.